What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, DOM-based open redirection. The open redirect is the very first web vulnerability that I learned quite a number of years back. And although performing the exploit is fairly straightforward, it took me a while to get my head wrapped around the implications of this particular vulnerability because it didn't really seem to do that much. It is, however, an important vulnerability. You will, for example, be rewarded on a bug bounty program if you find an open redirect. Okay, let's fire up the lab. So the idea here is that this is a blog and vulnerability occurs when we actually open one of the individual posts on the blog. And if we scroll down, we'll notice that there is a fairly harmless, at this stage at least, back to blog link, which takes us back to the main page. Let's take a look at that element with the inspect option in Firefox. So you can see straight away that that anchor tag has an on-click attribute. And inside that on-click attribute is actually some inline JavaScript. Let's fire up Burp Suite and take a closer look at that. JavaScript has this variable return URL. It's having a value assigned to it. In JavaScript, whenever we see this forward slash and then a trailing forward slash, the code in between represents a regular expression. It's used when we are searching strings for specific patterns. A regular expression has the dot exec method built in. So on that regular expression, dot exec is called and that takes an argument location. And in JavaScript, location is simply anything that's in the URL bar at the top of the page. So in simple terms, the URL is measured against this regular expression to see if there is a match. The value of location.href is then assigned depending on whether there is a match or not. And it does this making use of the JavaScript ternary operator. So the way this ternary expression works, if return ul exists, so that's going to depend on if there's a match. So if there is a match, then set the value of location.href to return URL at index one. So that gives us a clue that return URL is actually an array. But if there's no match, then simply set location.href to forward slash. So go back to the root of the web page. So the next question is, when would there be a match? And in order to figure that out, we need to decipher this JavaScript regular expression. So remember, it's looking in the URL bar. It's looking specifically for URL equals. We then have a, another part of the regular expression, which is inside parentheses. We'll get back to those shortly. We can just ignore them for now. It's looking for URL equals HTTPS. Notice the S is followed by a question mark. Basically means that the S is optional. So it could be HTTP or it could be HTTPS. We then have a colon character. We have two forward slashes, but since this is a regular expression, they need to be escaped. So that's why each of the forward slashes is actually prefixed by a backward slash. That's the escape character. But in terms of the regular expression, what we should see here is simply two forward slashes. We then have a dot which represents any character and the plus here refers to the dot and tells us that there could be an unlimited number of dots, i.e. any character in this regular expression. So in simple terms, what is the regular expression looking for? It's looking for what's very likely going to be part of the query string URL equals followed by a URL. And assuming there is a URL, there's going to be a match and location.href is going to be set to the value of that URL as opposed to forward slash. So you might be getting a bit of an idea regarding how we can exploit this. If we head to our query string, we can see we have one key value pair. So far, that's post ID equals three. Let's use the ampersand character to set up a new key value pair. And we're simply going to follow the syntax we've been looking at. URL equals HTTPS double forward slash. Let's try www.google.com. Let's load up the page. Now, at first, we don't notice any discernible difference with the page. However, we do know that once we click that back to blog button, all of that inline JavaScript is going to be executed. The URL is going to be checked for a match against the regular expression. And then the value of location.href is going to be set accordingly, in this case to www.google.com. Let's click back to blog. And you can see instead of going to the forward slash route, we actually get taken to google.com. So this is an example of an open redirect. We were able to stipulate where the victim's browser would redirect to with an arbitrary address. Now, I think that part's fairly straightforward, but if you're like me, you may still have some questions regarding the regular expression part of this. For example, what exactly were those left and right parentheses? 
So firstly, just to show you in the console, if we type location, you can see we get the value of our URL. And let's take the logic that was used on the page. We can actually paste this regular expression. We can call the dot exec method directly, and we can now pass location as the argument for this. We actually get an error here. And by the way, I actually copied and pasted this from the main page. You can see here we have the regular expression. What's missing here is actually the opening left parentheses. So this has not been copied accurately. There's also an additional single quote that shouldn't be here. So just keep that in mind if you are copying and pasting directly from the lab walkthrough. If you instead copy and paste from the actual page, so for example, from the burp suite output, you will in fact get the correct JavaScript syntax here. So now the correct syntax with our opening left parentheses. Take a look at the result we get here. When we run this, we actually get an array with two results. This may seem a little bit strange. Why do we have two matches? It's pretty clear that with a regular expression here, there should only be a single match against this string. And yet we have two results in our array. And the answer is to do with the left and right parentheses there. So the idea with the left and right parentheses is they are what's referred to as a capture group. It allows us to reference a specific part of the regular expression later. So we have our first item in the array, which is actually the match URL equals www.google.com. We then have the second item in the array, which is actually the value of the capture group being returned to us. Remember the idea of the JavaScript code is it's setting the value of the URL to location.href. So it needs to be able to reference the URL directly. And that's exactly what the left and right parentheses are for. They define the capture group, which is ultimately going to be set as the value of location.href. This is why in the JavaScript code, we can see location.href is set to the value of return URL at index one, i.e. the second index in the array. That's because it's deliberately referencing the value of this capture group that is returned here. In other words, unless we need to reference that capture group directly, it's not actually a mandatory part of this regular expression. So if I simply remove the left and right parentheses, you can see that now we just get a single result returned. It's still an array, but it's an array with a single index, index zero, where we actually get the match of the string against the regular expression there. So we understand all of the moving parts of this vulnerability now. The guidelines say that we need to exploit the vulnerability by redirecting the victim to the exploit server. Okay, let's head to the exploit server so we can get the URL of the exploit server. Here is the URL, so let's copy that link. Let's head back to the lab. So instead of URL equals HTTPS google.com, let's replace that with the address of the exploit server. And you can see as soon as we visit that link, we get the message, you've solved the lab. But the idea is when the victim comes here and then clicks the back to blog button, they're going to be redirected to the exploit server. Now, when I first learned about this vulnerability, it was very early on in my cybersecurity journey. And my initial reaction is, so what? We can send someone's browser somewhere. How is that hacking? Here are a couple of things to think about and are some of the reasons why the open redirect is potentially a security problem. The first is that it exploits the trust of an otherwise trustworthy domain. So imagine, for example, we have this very, very trusted domain, websecurityacademy.net, or replace that with whichever domain you can think of, could be something like google.com, for example. Something where the average person, when they see that domain, they think to themselves, okay, I don't need to worry too much about security, it's Google or it's websecurityacademy.net. I trust these guys. What people don't generally do is look at all of the extra information after the question mark. Some of these URL links can get fairly long and it's very likely that unless someone's paying a lot of attention, they're not going to notice a weird looking parameter as part of the query string, not going to notice this URL equals. Even if they did, they may not assume that there's necessarily any problem with that. So they simply look at the domain, websecurityacademy.net. Okay, it's a trusted domain. I can visit this link safely. Whereas ultimately, this redirect potentially takes the victim to an untrusted domain. There are different flavors of open redirect attack. For example, in this case, the victim doesn't immediately get rerouted to the malicious domain. They first have to click the back to blog button, which they're fairly likely to click in this context. There are other types of open redirect where as soon as the server sees that there's a specific parameter set in the request, immediately redirects the victim's browser to the malicious domain. 
So we're all familiar with the idea that we probably shouldn't visit dodgy websites and there could be security implications with doing that. And if someone just gave us a straight up dodgy looking link, we potentially won't click it. But as soon as we see Google or we see Web Security Academy, we're much more likely to click that link without questioning. So that's the first problem with Open Redirect. The second problem is that we may find that the Open Redirect itself is only part of a greater vulnerability. You see, after the victim ends up on the attacker controlled domain, the malicious website, what happens at that stage? Perhaps there's some type of cross-site scripting attack that's executed. Maybe some sort of cross-site request forgery attack is executed. Maybe some sort of drive-by download attack that takes advantage of an outdated browser. A whole host of different attacks can now end up taking place as a result of the fact that the victim has arrived on the attacker controlled domain. It's a very dangerous place to be. The key method of mitigation here is simply to make sure user input does not determine any redirect location for the browser. Another type of safeguard that many websites implement is what's referred to as an interstitial page. You've very likely seen this when you're browsing different websites. When we click on a link that's going to take us to a domain outside of the website that we're on, we receive a warning message. By the way, you are about to leave our site and you are about to visit this external domain. Is that what you want to do? Be careful. We can't verify the security of this external domain. So even if someone was able to generate an open redirect attack vector on your vulnerable web page, the presence of an interstitial can help to minimize the damage caused by that particular vulnerability. All right, hopefully you have a very good understanding of this particular lab and the vulnerability, the open redirect. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Catch you in the next lab.